Okay, so I admit this is kind of a strange video topic because we're taking two very unrelated ideas and putting them into one video just because they are sort of the same. I mean, they're both guys drafted out of the 2021 NHL entry draft, signing their contracts, and hopefully making impacts on their team sooner rather than later. One of them is pretty much guaranteed to be doing that. The other, it's not so guaranteed. Let's go over to Seattle and LA and talk about their two guys that they had signed recently from the 2021 draft. Firstly, we're talking about the Seattle Kraken's very first draft pick in NHL history, Matty Benier, second overall, right behind Owen Power, who had gone to the Buffalo Sabres. And then we're also talking about the LA Kings' second round pick, 42nd overall, Francesco Pinelli. The reason I'm bringing these two guys up is because, firstly, they had both recently signed with their teams, and secondly, I do think there's a lot more to like about both of these guys and their paths, that their stories are sort of similar in a way, but there's enough nuance to articulate different sides of it, I guess. So for Matty Beniers, let's go over him because he was taken first, or actually he was taken second, second overall, that is, first amongst these two players. Beniers, 19 years old, 6'2", 174, a left-handed center, playing for the Michigan University Wolverines, where he was over a point per game. He had 20 goals, 43 total points in 37 games, and was a pretty notable name for American hockey all throughout the international scene. He had a game for the World Junior Squad, he had himself an assist in that game, and he also had two points in the Olympics as well. But with Matty Beniers, his play with the Michigan Wolverines was probably the highlight of his season, where, as a sophomore player coming back to the team, he became the highest scoring player on the squad in general, beating out Brennan Brisson, freshman Luke Hughes, and Borderlow Johnson Power as well. There was a lot to like out of Matty Beniers, and as an NCAA signee heading over to the NHL, he will start playing some games with the Kraken to end off the 21-22 season. Now, for Seattle fans, you might be thinking, okay, this is our very first guy that we've ever drafted. What's he going to be like? What's the entire process going to be of having a prospect suiting up for our squad? Don't worry, fam. I kind of got you covered over here. So because he's an NCAA player coming over in this fashion, he's unfortunately going to burn off the first year of his ELC, which is his entry-level contract, by playing for Seattle in this short little stint here. What that means is that this year, 2021-2022, will fulfill the first year of the three-year contract, meaning that his actual contract expiration date will be in two seasons rather than the full three. So if this guy becomes an absolute maniac and becomes your best player in the next two seasons, you're going to have to pay him sooner rather than later, which is not really a big deal because Seattle doesn't really have too many cap problems anyway. Thank you, Ron Francis. But long story short, you're going to see this guy suiting up for your team, and... The expectations, I don't really think they should be too high, but I don't think they should be too low either. One of the things about Matty Beniers that made him so special as an NCAA freshman last year before getting drafted was just his awareness of what to do. This was a guy that might not have had the ceiling of a Connor McDavid or an Austin Matthews or a Shane Wright or a Quinton Byfield, etc., but... There was just so much projectability in his game because he was so smart, he was so aware, and you rarely saw Matty Beniers make any mistakes. He was almost like the perfect two-way, play-driving, efficient center that just did everything you needed to get done properly. He plays with pace, he's tough on the forecheck, when he has the puck he's really nifty, he's really creative at making plays and finding open space for teammates. When he doesn't have the puck he's always a passing option that makes things easier for the guys around him. When he's in his own zone he knows what to do to defend properly and make the right reads. Matty Beniers was just such a smart player whose game was also a combination of honesty and skill. He was super efficient everywhere he went, and it's why he was projected so high towards the NHL draft. Now, some people believe he should have gone first overall because of the uncertainties with Owen Power as to how good he would be, because when it comes to Matty Beniers, you could say he was probably the biggest slam dunk pick you could have made in the NHL entry draft last year because... Everything he did was so projectable. The way he plays is already so mature and poised that you could probably plop him into an NHL bottom six at the start of this season and he wouldn't do poorly. 
Now, that's not to say that right now, suiting up for Seattle after finishing up his sophomore year with the Michigan Wolverines, he's going to be amazing right off the bat. You got to remember, he's only 19 years old. But this is a player that could realistically max out as a top center for a Seattle Kraken team that is looking to get better over the next few years. And if you're able to get yourselves a Shane Wright or a Logan Cooley or somebody in the top of this year's draft that could project to being a number one center as well you could have a super deadly one-two punch of Wright and Beneers for the next 10, 15 years if you're here in Seattle. And look, no disrespect to Victor Rask, but that's a pretty good center core, if I do say so myself. But for a lot of these NCAA guys, you don't usually see them come into the NHL and start scoring the lights out immediately unless their names are Trevor Zegras and Cole Caulfield, because those guys are pretty good. For Matty Beneers, I wouldn't be surprised if it took him a while to really develop into what would be a capable middle six production level score. Like, it would be nice if he plays the full season in 22-23 next year for Seattle and he gets, I don't know, 40 points. But I wouldn't be too disappointed if he didn't get that. For Matty Beneers, it's a long-term game. He's already so poised and polished up with his hockey instincts. It's just the offense that you really want to pay attention to and see where that goes over the next few years. So for Seattle fans, you guys better be excited because Matty Beneers is a good player and he's coming over to your organization. Next up, let's go over to LA, just take the Highway 99 down south, and talk about Francesco Pinelli, because this is a guy who also signed the other day, and who also is a defensively responsible two-way center. Now, the difference is Pinelli was taken in the second round, 40 spots after Beneers was in the 2021 draft. And it kind of blows my mind that it was even available at this spot in the first place. You look at where the scouts were projecting Pinelli to go, the highest ranking over here was 23rd overall by TSN and Bob McKenzie. The lowest was 31st by Future Considerations. So all the scouting outlets, the major ones at least, had Francesco Pinelli as a first round talent. Where have we seen this before? First round caliber guys playing out of the OHL who slip into the second round for the LA Kings to come in and scoop him up. Hey, this is reminding me a lot of Arthur Kaliev back from the 20, what was that, 2018? No, 2019 NHL entry draft. There is a difference, though, between Pinelli and Kaliev. Kaliev, you know, he's a trigger man. He does all these great things when he scores goals. Pinelli did not have that same goal scoring ability. In fact, it was mostly his hockey sense, two-way play, and defensive responsibility that got him the nod in the first place. He was playing in the Alps Hockey League last season because the OHL shut down, and that's technically the team he got drafted from. He also suited up for Team Canada at the World Under-18s, where he had 11 points in seven games played. This season, though, playing in his second year in the OHL as the captain of the Kitchener Rangers, he had 59 points in 54 games played. Over a point per game, sure, but he still made enough strides in terms of his overall progression to warrant a contract signing over here. Let's go over onto LAKingsInsider.com. This is the LA Kings official website where they publish articles about the team. This article was published by Zach Dooley just yesterday, so 24 hours ago. Kings signed forward Penelli to an entry-level contract. There are indeed some interesting things to note about this one right here. His contract is set to starting in the 2022-2023 season, and with his age, Penelli is not eligible to play in the AHL next year, and thus is only eligible for either the NHL or the OHL. He'll attend training camp with either an NHL or OHL target, with his contract sliding back to 2023-2024 should he play once more in the Ontario Hockey League. Now, I don't really think it would be realistic to go out there and expect Pinelli to make the NHL right away, especially with the center core that the LA Kings do have and that they're trying to develop over there. It's not just Kopitar, Deneau, and Byfield. You still have Turcotte. You still have Velarde. Velarde might be traded, but still, there are a lot of centers in the LA Kings forward core, and that's been one one of the problems that we have been highlighting when it comes to where you project these players down the middle in the next few years, somebody's got to move to the wing eventually, and it just depends on who you think should be the guy. For Francesco Pinelli, though, there's nothing really to lose by sending him back to the OHL and having him dominate another season as a 20-year-old. He's always been super refined with his two-way ability and his defensive game, so maybe you just say to him next year, hey, go back to the OHL, we want to see you go out there and be the guy. Sure, you're already the captain of your team and that's great, but we want you to be a captain that goes out there and scores points like a captain in the OHL should as well. Maybe that's the entire game plan here, you're already so good defensively, why not? try to put the puck in the back of the net a little bit more, or if he's good enough to play next season in the NHL and they decide, hey, let's give him the opportunity, 
then that would be pretty good too. I mean, if he impresses to the point that that's a possibility, then hey, good for him, right? Sky's the limit, is it not? I personally doubt it based off of how the LA Kings were so careful when treating these other guys they have in their system. Turcott, Byfield, of course, these guys come to mind immediately. I don't really think they would go the Pinelli to the NHL right away route, but you can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about that. So, Seattle fans, if you're still here sticking around for the end of this video, then hey, I appreciate that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about Matty Beniers, your second over overall pick heading over to Seattle and playing for your team, your very first ever draft pick. That must be exciting, eh? Also, if you're a Kings fan, talk to me in the comments as well about Francesco Pinelli and where you think his career is going to go. I hope you enjoyed this video of Schwarzenegger 9 and bye.